So the defining your identity is your identity. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be true. What you think, how you feel, that they would have to be aligned into one. And I was thinking that I want, when I look at my pictures, when I look at other people's pictures, you could you could see who they are based on whether or not they're smiling, their facial expressions, what their body looks like, their fashion, the things that they're doing. And they say that a, a picture can say a thousand words. And just say, for example, if I say, oh, I'm not articulate, you know, I, I should probably stop saying that because it depends that I could be an introvert in general, but if I see a guy with a nice Corvette, I'll probably want to go talk to him. And I could talk to him for a couple hours about cars in general. So it, it depends on the topic. It depends on the people. Uh, I could be introverted most of the time, but I could be extroverted too, depending on the topic situation. And I'm, I'm trying to learn how to be more open and, and I need to work on my tonality. Because uh, when, when I was young, <clears throat> there, there weren't a lot of Asian kids in my school and I was introverted. I was in the survival mode. I didn't love myself. So I, I pretty much kept to myself and I got into a lot of fights when I was a kid. And I would just like to say I never threw the first punch. It was all self-defense in my opinion. So that this kind of gave me a, a RBF, the, my, my face. It's like, stay away from me. Don't even come at me because... If, if, if you want to fight me, then I'm, I would defend myself. It is what it is. And I, I just don't look like too too friendly so that people come at me or, or they want to mess with me or some, some reason. So uh, these are things that I'm trying to fix in my adult life. That I'm so comfortable with doing it. I'm so used to doing it that, uh, that that's how I look. That's the energy that I give off. And if, if I want to be, you know, welcomed and approached, by other people that uh, the, these defense mechanisms, they help me, but they hurt me too. Like they, they help me physically, but then they hurt me on a, a mental level. So you, you could see who I am by looking at my pictures because they say a thousand words. And also you're, you're attracting a mirror of yourself. So however you're presenting yourself, you're going to attract another person that is the same. Uh, maybe they have similar problems or strengths. So just, just keep that in mind that, uh, you know, you're you're the common denominator. You you would make mistakes and in your life and hopefully you could be aware of them to to fix them because I, I think that uh when I was young I, I just accepted, you know. I, I grew up without my mother, so I, I I just had a void in my heart. And I think that I always wondered who I would be. If I grew up with her, but I'm pretty sure, you know, it doesn't matter which parent I grew up with, my, my life would be, it wouldn't be optimal. And I'm pretty sure, I don't I don't blame my parents because their lives, I'm assuming they weren't optimal either. And I'm, I was also thinking that uh, in Asian culture, they don't necessarily favor or treat the female properly versus the, the boy. And maybe they, they would spoil the boy and I wouldn't necessarily treasure the female. And it's unfortunate that uh, may, maybe my mother, she she wasn't necessarily favored because uh, she had three brothers. They were all six foot, you know. And then I was like, what happened to me? <laughs> but I, I, I always wonder. And, you know, as an adult, it's... It's in the past already, and, and, and you can't really use it as, as an excuse. So, well, well, whatever your beef is with your family, ho hopefully you, you could ask why, be aware of it, and try and solve your problems. Uh, try and reach out to your family if you want to. And if, if they accept you, they accept you. And if they don't, then they don't. Because I would say for... Uh, my family in general, I'm not super close with them, and it is what it is. That I'm, I can I can hold out my hand, and if they don't take it, it is what it is. That at, at least I tried to do it, and that's what matters the most. That's why I reached out to my mother after you know, 39 years, 40 years. That I, I went to school. I moved to California, and I went to school, and I, I met certain people. 
that, that helped, you know, that, that helped build me. And martial arts, also when I was in high school, I was in healthcare. I, I felt like that that taught me how to have patience and, and to deal with certain people. Uh, I also met the, the background investigator that helped find my mother. So I think like looking back at my past experiences, they all line up, all of the dots. So even a bad stuff that happened. Uh, um, I moved to Gilroy, you know, it, it was bad for me. Um, um, I, I think it helped me grow. The, the past two years, I've, I've grown a lot. And, and I'm proud of myself. And I'm, I normally don't give myself credit for the good things that I do. And, and I should. Uh, they, they, these things are normal. And just say, for example, if, if I don't feel deserving or worthy, when people try and give me a gift or something, that it will feel awkward for me to accept it. And it's normal, you know, because just say, for example, if, if, if I gave my mother a red envelope, um, I gave her a silver coin, you know, it, that's not a lot of money, but it, it's the thought and it's, it's the thought of, of me trying to do it. That, that means that gives it meaning. So, uh, oh, ho hopefully she would appreciate it. I'm pretty sure she does. She actually tried to give it back to me and I was like, it's, it's a beautiful coin. That's why I gave it to you. So it, that's, the, that's the first red envelope I ever gave to her. And I'm, I was trying to make up for the red envelope that, that I, I didn't necessarily take from her because she tried to give me a check and then I was like, you know, I'm a man, I'm older, I, I don't need your money essentially. And he, even when she came out, I was like, I, I got you. Well, whatever you need, I, I will pay for it. So she tried to give me money for like, uh, her airplane tickets and the hotels and I was like, it, that's all good, you know. I, I had already budgeted these things out. That that's why you should have a budget so the a map so you know what you can do when you can do it, when you can make these moves and when you can't. So right right now, I'm I'm trying to be more into monk mode because I I don't have a lot of liquidity right now, and I'm trying to focus on like my rent, my emergency fund, my my six month fund my trip to Japan, my investment, stuff like that. So, oh, also another tidbit in that book was uh, each dollar you spend right now is $5 you're not going to have in the future. Because if you invested the money, then you will have it later. And essentially, what's, what is retirement? It's for freedom. That's the whole point of money so that uh, you can save up yearly expenses so that you, you don't have to work anymore, essentially. So, um, other people's destinies, they might not be your destiny. So just say, for example, if someone's like, oh, move in with me, have a baby with me, buy a house with me. If, if that's not where your goals align, then don't go. Because you you will regret it later. If, if it's not something that you necessarily want. Because I've, I've, I've heard people say, I regret having my kids or I regret buying this house on uh, it, it's something that I don't want to say it, and and I know that sounds kind of negative, but for me, I'm, I know I know me. That if, if I bought a house, it would be a mistake, because to buy a house in California, <laughs> you know, I, I prop, my mortgage will probably be like five grand or whatever, you know. I would have to figure out how to make that amount of money before I, I could do these kinds of things. So. Sometimes you outgrow certain relationships, such as your family, your friends, or your romantic people, or certain strangers that you meet, and that's okay. You know that they're, they're just there for you to learn, to get better. And it's best not to get attached to certain people that aren't helping you go to the places where you need to go, because you need to love yourself, and you need to love where you're going over everybody. So look, look out for number one. That, that's what you guys got to do. And, and I know it sounds kind of selfish, but in the grand scheme of things, that that's how we're designed. That's how we're built. I'm not saying don't give back, but uh, see, see your vision in a long view and not necessarily what's in front of you for the next five minutes.